1995, the thematic exhibition Giorgio de Chirico and Greek Myth was presented in the New Wing with 114 works, oil paintings, drawings, prints, sculptures, originating from the Giorgio and Isa de Chirico Foundation of the Santa Filippa Marieri Foundation and private collections. On the occasion of the exhibition, a fully illustrated bilingual catalogue in Greek and French was published with informative essays and comments relating to the work exhibited as well as excerpts from the artist's writings. In 1996, in the new wing of the museum, an exhibition with works by two great sculptors of the 19th century was presented. 18 watercolors and 55 sculptures by Auguste Rodin, together with 10 sculptures by Camille Claudel. While giving emphasis to Rodin's work, the exhibition aimed at presenting aspects from all the phases of the artist's oeuvre including works created during the long relationship between them, works which reveal the mutual influence that each one's sculpture exerted on the other. The exhibits were lent by museums, foundations and private collections abroad, mainly from France and Switzerland. 1997, Lines of Sight. The exhibition presented the history of photography through the works of the most well-known representatives of the various photographic genres. Landscape, portrait, war, ethnographic, science and experimental photography, photojournalism and fashion, including pictures by pioneers on the Greek photography scene. 130 photographs were exhibited in all by 26 foreign and Greek photographers. In 1998, Glancing at the Century. Without claiming to be a retrospective, the exhibition touched on important aspects of 20th century art by presenting artists from various periods and currents over the past hundred years. The aim was to give an idea, even though schematic, of modern and contemporary artistic creation, but also to offer a fertile stimulus both to the exhibition visitors and to the readers of the catalogue a Greek and English edition, which accompanied the exhibition. In total, 95 works were presented, oil paintings, drawings, watercolors, engravings and sculptures, by 42 artists, including exhibits belonging to the Foundation's collection, whilst others were lent by private collections. nineteen ninety nine classics of modern art in the context of this exhibition some of the greatest artists of modernism with highly significant works produced during the most mature moments of their creative careers were presented for the first time in greece in total twenty nine works were exhibited by nineteen artists degas Cezanne, rodin monet gauguin van gogh toulouse lautrec bonnard Picasso, Leger, Braque, Miro, Kandinsky, Klee, Ernst, Giacometti, Bacon, Pollock and Balthus. The exhibition catalogue was published in both Greek and English editions. Two thousand. Henry Moore in the light of Greece. The exhibition presented various aspects of Moore's oeuvre that related to the art of Greece, Cycladic, Archaic and Classical, 
and the immense impact that this contact had on the work and thought of the great British sculptor. In total, 45 sculptures, 26 drawings, three graphics, five albums, two tapestries, and many maquettes and objects from the sculptor's studio were presented. The exhibits were mainly lent by the Henry Moore Foundation, as well as the Ferrens Art Gallery, the Huddersfield Art Gallery, the Ashmolean Museum, and private collectors. The exhibition was accompanied by a fully illustrated and documented catalogue, with editions in Greek and English. Two thousand and one, Toulouse Lautrec, Woman as Myth, in the New Wing. The exhibition with works by Toulouse Lautrec was curated around the central and multifaceted role which the female figure played in the oeuvre of the great French artist. In total, a hundred and thirty-five works were presented: oil paintings, drawings, and prints. The exhibits were on loan from museums, foundations galleries and private collections in France, Germany, Switzerland, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom. The exhibition was accompanied by a fully illustrated catalogue in Greek and English editions. Jean Miro. Jean Miro is undoubtedly one of the sacred monsters of 20th century art. In the history of the avant-garde, he is unique for the fertility of his ideas, his inventiveness, his stylistic versatility, and the boldness with which he brought about a radical change in the ethics of seeing. With an innovatory style of painterly expression, he transforms ideas into works of art, noises, murmurs, lines of verse or musical notes, lights in the darkness or signs in the heavens and on the skyline, birds or indeterminate biomorphic shapes from the animal kingdom. These are the elusive elements that provide the superficial subjects of his work. Two thousand and three, Georges Braque, the calm force of avant-garde art. At the forefront of French avant-garde art, Georges Braque is the embodiment of restraint, discipline, gentleness, purity, and clarity, influencing in a major degree the visual arts of the past century. He is both a deeply meditative painter and a master craftsman. During his creative lifetime. He produced a body of work unequaled in its technical integrity and animated by an interior, invisible, poetic force. His painting is a constant process of balancing order and emotion. Two thousand and four, Picasso and Greece. Picasso himself epitomizes 20th century artistic development. He was at the cutting edge of this artistic development because his suggestions acted as both a challenge and a catalyst in his time. Instead of being a passive recipient, he became a co-agent, actively expressing these new forces which originated and developed in the favorable climate of what was perhaps history's most fertile era, during which new ways of thinking New ideologies and new ways of expression in modern art were formulated. With his impetus, energy, bravery, and ingenuity, Picasso challenged his age. He was armed with a solid classical education and a close acquaintance with the aesthetic values of antiquity. Picasso's life, education, and work were imbued with a Mediterranean way of thinking and the cultural ideals of Greco-Roman antiquity. 2005 Metamorphosis. 
British art of the 60s, organized in close cooperation with the British Council and the Kalus Gulbenkian Foundation Lisbon, the two institutions which are the main providers of the works. This group exhibition focuses on the manifold trends which shaped British art of the 60s, a golden period in which new groundbreaking movements emerged in the United States and Europe, especially in Britain and swinging London. This period is widely acclaimed as an extraordinary era of fertility and growth in all art fields, especially the visual arts. Two thousand and six, Tetsis, Thalassa, the sea. This exhibition revisits the space and time enclosed in Tetsis painting via a theme that holds great appeal for us all, as well as for the artist himself, the sea. This ancient theme has, from the very beginnings of the artist's career, constituted a space of particular sensitivity. It has, in fact, been the focus of a greater part of his visual preoccupations and investigations that would eventually bring him to the fore as a genuine exponent of the country's post-impressionistic seascape tradition. Tetsis has painted and continues to paint the sea as inner urge as he has experienced it and still continues to experience it today or as the sea itself shaped his memory as a child becoming knowledge and the integral part of an intimate empirical relationship. But in doing so, the artist is not merely nostalgic. His paintings rather reflect a resistance to decay and to the corrosive impact of time on experience. The museum's workshops for children of 5 to 13 years old continue to take place every August in the context of each exhibition. The two-hour workshops include both a tour around the galleries and a session which, through using special subject matters, techniques and materials, aims to initiate children to the essence of each artist's work, while at the same time triggering off the expression of the young visitor's own thoughts and images.